Okay. So Javon, whenever you're ready to. All right. Okay, here we are. Perfect. Well, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. <laughs> we are so excited to have you join us today for the quarterly meeting. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance. I've been suffering with the flu. I'm recovering. So I apologize for my voice today. <laughs> but, you know, we'll work through it and we'll, you know, rock it out today. So we're going to begin by going through the agenda on what we're going to go through today. So first and foremost, We'll go through the UDLHE and gamification. Um, we'll discuss a little bit about the digital lab and follow up with that. Talk about the UDL Earn International Summit, which is super exciting. Uh, the networking opportunities that we have, you'll hear a lot about that and have you know, some opportunities to figure out how you can get involved a little bit. And then we'll discuss what's next. All now, right. as we go into gamification, I will pass the mic on to Anne. Okay, and before I go into gamification, everybody, I want to drop the notes from today, the link for the notes in the chat box so that everybody has access and can follow along at your leisure. So let me go ahead and I've got so many windows open right now. And I don't want to just send that to Sherry who direct messaged me. I want to send it to everyone. So hopefully I am right now. Let's see. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to ask that somebody else take over the um, admitting people in the room because I literally have transcripts going in front of me and side notes and chat boxes and trying to see all your lovely faces today. Um, so if anybody has joined us that hasn't been in a previous meeting, I'm Ann Risto and um, you are on your screen hopefully looking at the note deck that goes along with our meeting today. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to the presentation deck, but know that you can follow it pretty simultaneously within either. Um, Google slide deck link is right there for your convenience at the top of the notes. So gamification, we are really excited to introduce everyone to a gamification feature for the network. And starting today, we're gonna to have six opportunities to accumulate points as network members, um, just have a little fun, not only in our meetings, but throughout our time that we're not together, where um, we can grow our network and get to know each other a little bit better in a different way. So one way that you would be able to earn those points would be by attending the sessions that we have the quarterly meetings. But if you're not able to, you can um, watch the recorded meetings. Those links are available on the SIG website page. And um, another way to make um, gain points is to help us grow our network and invite your colleagues. And when they join, they'll um, put your name in as a referral. Um, we also would like you to consider sharing a little bit of information about yourself. We have an on-campus with and we have some questions that relate to UDLHE, but then also um, things that help us get to know you, like what's your alma mater and um, favorite quotes and something you can't live without in the morning. So those things um, we will feature in different meetings. We'll always use it in our meetings only. Don't worry, that information's not gonna go public anywhere. Um, another area where we have points is with tweeting and tagging UDLHE, having a, or hosting a pop-up session or a Twitter chat. You can reach any of the leadership team to coordinate that. 
and then extending our network experience into um, the UDL HE work groups that we're going to share with you a little bit later in this meeting. So we're going to do this on the honor system. You all are going to keep your own points of record. So however you do that, if you're scratching it on a post-it note or if you have a um, note in your phone, when you earn points, write that down because then when we have our next meeting, you'll notice in today's meeting where the sign-in is, there's a column coming soon, gamification score space. So next quarterly meeting, you'll sign in and you'll also put your total points and we will have some really fun flat swag for you all um, <laughs> to keep everyone motivated and again, um, just get to know each other in another way. So that's our gamification. So it's, I feel like it's a on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> but um, if you have questions, of course you can reach out to us. A good portion of today's session is going to be that continuation work from the digital lab follow-up. And how this is gonna work today is we're gonna have two options because maybe you weren't in our last quarterly meeting or maybe you're still like mulling over all of the considerations that took place in your um, breakout group for that. And so we have option one, where if you were here and you have evidence of an action that you took based off of the interactions during that last meeting, you're going to follow option one. I'm not going to read those directions out to you right now because um, they will be in your breakout link as well. But option one is for people who were present, who have evidence, who connected to those pain points in some way, and you can go into one of those rooms focusing on different pain points and really share your practice around, this is what I've been trying, this is the action that I've taken, and um, this is the evidence that I have. It can be something that you do orally, you might have something that you wanna share on the screen with your group, but we're gonna ask you to go ahead and have professional conversations around that specific pain point. If you say, well, I didn't do that or um, I don't have anything or those pain points didn't resonate with me, I um, have a fun option number two for you, which is an example of evidence. And it's a simple example. Um, one of my, our colleagues um, on LinkedIn posted some work that his post-grad students did and was willing to share that with us. So it's intended to not be a perfect example. Um, it's intended to spark conversations for that group. And that is going to be option two. No matter what, we're gonna have about 40 minutes. And I will show you um, next the breakout rooms. We have two rooms we're gonna to try to have about five people in each room so it doesn't get too large. And the breakout rooms you'll self-assign once we're ready. And then again, if you wanna go into that example of evidence versus any of the pain points, they're labeled as such. Let me show you in our notes how we're going to access the materials that you need. So I'm scrolling instead of, there we go. I just showed you those two slides. And then the breakout rooms are organized exactly as they were at our last quarterly meeting. So you will select a link to a room. I'm sorry, you'll go into a breakout room and you'll select the materials to the same name of that room. So if I scroll all the way down and I am going to go into example of evidence, it will open up and I actually already have it opened up here. And it first and foremost, I'll be in this main room so that I can answer any questions or troubleshoot for you all. Um, but you will have the instructions the breakdown of the amount of time, 
you'll identify three main roles within your group once you get into it and walk through the steps of the materials, capturing the information that um, resonated with you all with the actions and work moving forward. So pretty self-explanatory, but again, I went over that very fast. <laughs> and I want to make sure that if you have questions, you feel free to stay here in the room. But if you are ready to go into your breakout room, you will have in almost every single room, a member of leadership of the leadership team will be with you. So you can ask them for guidance and you can always reach back out um, to me and I'll pop into your room and make sure that I can help you be successful in continuing this digital lab follow-up work with really getting into our actions. And me, I was gonna open up the breakout rooms, but then I had to let someone in. Um, so breakout rooms, I'm opening all of the rooms now. And you should feel free to join each other in the pain point room that resonates with you that you'd like to focus on actions around or in an example of evidence room. We'll see you in about 40 minutes, everybody. I'm sorry, I was stuck on the phone for a bit there. Um, would you mind catching me up real quick? No, no worries. Um, <laughs> so we're going into the digital lab follow up, and it's okay. organized the same way that you all had organized at last go round. So mm -hmm. what's on the screen right now are the pain point rooms. But what okay. we added was an example of evidence room. So if people um, didn't attend that session or um, didn't feel like they had an action related to the room that they were in, they could still go in and see some materials and interact. And so how you'll do that, Eric, is yeah. in the notes, you'll select the room that you want to go, you know, the focus area to match up with the breakout room that you're going to go into. I gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, no Eric. Hi, Ann. Hi, Javon. Hi, Nico. I just joined. I was glad. <laughs> That's good. I almost ran across the campus, so oh. I'm good. <laughs> That's not even just, in time. Time. <laughs> just in time. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll get in and check on people in the rooms one and two. Perfect. I. I am looking, we, see, we have people in faculty development already. Yep, I'm still waiting to see if anyone is going to join online modalities. We have a couple people in with the um, example of evidence. Okay, I'll ask people to move to like break two different rooms if there are many. Is that right? Yeah, that would be great if you don't mind. Um, there's right. a lot of people in faculty development right now. So mm -hmm. maybe they want to split into two rooms just because okay. the amount of time that we have dedicated, we want people to have a mm -hmm. chance to share. Okay, I'll join them. Hi, Marla. Hi, Michael and Amanda. Marla left. Hello. There's Michael. <laughs> Hi. So I'm driving, so I have pretty limited interactivity. So I know you've given instructions. I'm not really. This is also oh. my first meeting, so I'm not. I, well, I'm very ill-equipped to to leverage my agency for action. <laughs> no worries. Um, I I'm I appreciate you not trying to join a breakout room while you're driving your car, but we appreciate you joining us and letting us ride with you down the road. So. Um, we're just 
in the engagement portion of the meeting for about another 35 minutes. And it's follow up work to our last quarterly meeting. We had a digital lab where we focused on some pain points in higher education. And so we're returning to that to have conversations around actions that have been taken. Um, and for those who didn't get a chance to participate, we have an example of practice for them to have conversations around the systems that might need to take place. And we lost him, Javon. So maybe we he lost was in the room him. or maybe he lost he signal. He probably drove, yep, out of signal. Yeah. I might hop into, I might wait just a little bit to see if anyone joins online modalities and then I might hop into okay. something else, maybe faculty development. That seems to be the big one. <clears throat> yeah, technology access and technology training has two, four, seven people. So I don't know if they wanna split or just keep it as it is. And then it looks like there's a large group in the faculty development. Faculty development. Yep. But it looks like- Because they're an A and B. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but okay. Some of them are going over into B now. Mm -hmm. Oh, Michael's back. <laughs> Got him. Oh, there's Dania. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. hi, Amanda. Okay. Hi. Um, I wasn't sure. I've never joined a meeting either, and I really wasn't sure. I did go into one of the example rooms, but no one else was there. So, um, um, so which one sure. do you want to join? Um, I'm happy to go to any of them because I don't have any examples. So I just wasn't <laughs> sure which. If you want to go into example of evidence A, there are three other people in that room right now. Perfect, I'll do that, thank you. No problem, enjoy. Uh, mic check. Oh, we hear you now, welcome back. Thank you, I'm not sure what I did, but I'll probably do it again. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is my first meeting, so I don't really know. Um, I don't really know even what's happening. Can you? You said this is a lab, a lab working session. Can you tell me if there's nobody else in the main room at this moment? Can I ask a basic question, like what is, what's everybody talking about? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, Michael, our last quarterly meeting, we did some work with pain points in um, implementing UDL in higher education, and we use the problem solving process, the four step problem solving process loosely to do so. And the meeting notes from that session are at the bottom of a document that people are now going in either around those same pain points or um, focusing on an example that was provided. So let me give you an idea of what those pain points are. Um, the big buckets of each of those pain points was like faculty administration and ownership of UDL, um, technology access and technology training, UDL faculty development, online modalities and pivoting. And that had a lot to do with our um, responsiveness to COVID and online assessments building and building common language around UDL practices and principles in your organization. And then the example of evidence is um, from a colleague of ours in higher ed at Brown College in Canada. And he works with postgraduate marketing students and designs learning engagements for them to demonstrate their use of technology to in a relevant format for the people that they would be working with. And so he was willing to be vulnerable and share his, what he had sent to his students in an, an example of what he received back so that people can talk about 
the mm-hmm. principles of UDL around that example and what it might take to build that into a practice within their campuses. Does that help? Uh, yeah, thank you. So if, I, if I'm just repeating back to you what you told me, the this is a group of, I honestly, I don't even know how many people are in this, have been in this meeting, but the, a group of, a group of faculty uh, or people with teaching responsibilities uh, in higher education across North America. And they are looking at issues of implementation within their own spheres of influence. So on the scale of individual classrooms or courses. Um, and this is for, I was inferring this is for like early, early, people relatively new to medium familiarity with UDL? Is that a fair statement? Um, Not necessarily. There's a couple of pieces there that I wanna just give you more information on. It's an international network. So it's not just people from North America and um, it's people who are in all different ranges of their implementation of UDL in higher education. So the common ground is higher education and the roles that are represented are any roles in higher ed. So it could be a faculty member, it could be instructional design, it could be administration, um, lots of different options. And I don't have the um, visual on my screen right now to tell you, how many people are in the meeting at this moment. Um, The network has a few hundred people. And um, this is our first transition from um, leadership. Eric and Jen, Eric Moore was one of our um, co-leads. And now it's Javon Lancaster and myself and Risto. And so um, some of the kinks that we're working out is communicating the <laughs> the access to the meeting because we're able to publish publicly the um, that the meeting's happening, but providing the Zoom link, we have to do more privately. So it gives us a little bit of a of a connection issue for for some. Okay. Sure, yeah, that's fair. Thank you. I'm sorry. I so I, I saw that on on social media recently. We I, I'm familiar with UDL uh, and got to participate in Digicon last year, but I'm not familiar with the meeting. So my intent was just to show up and work so that I could get some familiarity with the meeting, but then that I just wasn't really in a format for where I could lurk. So I'm sorry to kind of awkwardly be asking basic questions. I was, I was hoping to just be able to listen and, and learn about what these meetings were. Yeah, no, no, this is the perfect out. time. Yeah, don't, don't apologize at all. This is the perfect time for that because the network members are in breakout rooms right now. And I stayed here in the main room so that I can do exactly what you're doing is make sure that people feel welcomed and are informed and I can answer any questions and help them with any troubleshooting for their breakout rooms. So no problem at all. I do want to um, just say, Danny Smith, are you in the house? Hello. Hi. Hi. (laughs) <laughs> you can Hi. sorry i'm i'm late i was looking all over for my email i'm like what email um <laughs> if you want to just shoot me into a group that's cool yeah so like do you want to go into the group that we used your example for sure you just, okay unless you <laughs> want to go into a different group it's up to you no i could use that group that's sure okay that'd be awesome um let me find you and move you over do you have it? Do you want me to move in? I've got it. I think I've got so many windows open right now. Okay. Have fun. Cool. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to try again um, and to try it. <laughs> I'm just sitting in like, like group one. I'm like, no one wants to talk administration. What? <laughs> No, yeah, talk pretty much like ownership. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> pretty much like online modalities. <laughs> I thought that would have been popular. Go figure. <laughs> I was jonesed about it. I was <laughs> so I'm in the room. <laughs> I'm like sitting. I'm like, 
definitely someone's coming. Like I originally picked breakout room B because it was like, A is going to be packed. I'm just going to go to B and be like. You know what? The last meeting, it was packed. It, I, we talked <laughs> we so, so much about it. I know. I, I wonder know. If, I wonder if maybe people were just like <laughs> nuts to this. We aren't getting anywhere with any of these people. <laughs> sphere of influence (laughs) this is impossible (laughs) forget I know I'm like did I forget to mention that room when I was like quickly (laughs) going through everything because I so badly wanted everybody to just be able to get to their rooms because I know that they're going to have fantastic conversations once they get there so (laughs) (laughs) no you definitely didn't forget just (laughs) <laughs> they're just not there <laughs> just not, I just feel like last picked for sports so oh. <laughs> kind of like elementary school like I'm too nerdy for this topic <laughs> no. well it's hey okay. actually actually I'm glad that you're here with us in the main room I do need to Javon did you by any chance I know that we're 28 minutes in but I don't know what at what point we've started with that 28 minute timer. So if you can make sure you keep me on track, um, because we have some really excited, excited, I'm very excited about some really exciting, I should say, um, work group opportunities for the network, some things that we're structuring and organizing that we want to share with everybody after our um, engagement time together. So, you know, I did not take note of what time we entered the breakout rooms. Well, it should be just about on the hour of three, if because it's my clock says it's three twenty-eight right now. In my timer on the presentation that I can see just tiny in the corner says that we're at twenty-eight minutes. Okay. So I would say that we're probably twenty-five minutes into the rooms. So if we want to give them like a fifteen-minute. You think 25 minutes already? When I went in my room, I looked at the time and I calculated that we'd need to be back like five to four. Oh. But no, one, no one came into my room. Yeah. That's and that's why no, one, no one entered my room either. Don't feel bad. Okay. <laughs> Is it because you all love leadership and public administration too? Yeah, well, well that's a minute. Because- this is a brave space. <laughs> you get to hang here with me in my room, which is troubleshooting. Yeah. Right, so that's why I, came. I was like, I don't know if you want me to stay in there. I'm happy to wait in case people come, or if you want me to help out with something else. I was like, I'll just come and ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, funny. we can see. We can see if anyone pops in. And- <laughs> I was gonna say, Amira, where are you? I'm happy to join you wherever you are. I'm happy to stay here with yeah. all of you, lovely folks. Well, if, if Amira, if you and Darla want to do a faculty and administration small group chat, you're welcome to do that, but you're always welcome to stay here with us as well. Sure, faculty. Which one did you say? It's oh, faculty. faculty and administration? Mm-hmm. Oh, like you mean like just the two of us? Yeah. Oh, or we can or we can, out here, or we can have a conversation or here we can and hang out hang here. out around it. Amira, good... before you leave, you said three fifty five around. That's what I calculated because I was okay. like I I tried to like know what time I'd have to come back, and that's what I was calculating. I think it was like three seventeen ish. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah. So I had it a little backwards. We're not fifty. We don't have fifteen more minutes. We have used fifteen minutes. We have yeah. twenty five more minutes. So we'll give them like a halfway mark in five minutes. So then I know there's Natsuko. Welcome back. (laughs) Oh, you're on mute. Of course I did. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Javon. Hi. (laughs) Nice to meeting you. It's so nice to meet you as well, (laughs) finally. Yes, finally. Um, so I checked on the faculty group and they are having great discussions and um, 
um, we broke into two, but had like small, super small and then bigger. So we just decided to join the force. <laughs> okay, can I just real quick, Jessica just joined us and I wanna make sure that that's intentional on her part. You're welcome to hang with us, Jessica, or if there's something that we can help you with. Uh, no, I, I, I got a notice that there was a U, uh, UDL meeting and I yes. wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't know where, which group it came from. I've been following uh, several UDL groups. Okay. So I just popped in um, just because I wasn't sure if this was a uh, part of the Canadian UDL group or where this was. Oh, well, welcome. This is the higher ed group that's international. Okay. Hi. So Hi, so we all work in higher education in some form or function, and um, we actually just did a quick introduction because we wanted to get into the engagement, which nice. is a follow-up for a digital um, design lab that we did at our last quarterly meeting. Nice. Well, I, I just want to say hi because I would really like to be part of the group. I unfortunately had to teach. I quit teaching a little bit early so I could make it here this late um so um but maybe I could follow up with your your outcomes like just follow your email and then jump in when you were where you're not in the middle of the flow of something well that's absolutely up to you I will let you know that um at five minutes to four we're going to use the last 35 minutes of our meeting time to discuss work groups of different structures that we have coming up. So you might want to either stay or come back for that okay. so that you can be in the know okay. and, and maybe look at what you might be interested in or at least be familiar with where we're going as a network. Sounds wonderful. Thank you for filling me in. So it's in five, it's basically in 20 minutes kind of thing. Basically, yes. 20 minutes. All right. I'll try and pop back in 20 minutes. Thank you okay. so much for making me feel welcome. No yeah. problem. Glad right. to have you. Yeah. All right. So, so Natsuko, everybody's doing great in your session. Um, one thing yeah. I want to ask you guys is our intention was to have a quick share out of the conversation or the highlights of the conversation. Do you feel like your rooms are gonna be okay to have a representative do that? I think it's well facilitated and well shared and I think they're good, yeah. Okay, and we don't, you know, we're always a no nonsense kind of group. So it's not, that everyone has to, you know, if there's a group that doesn't want to share, we're not going to like stronghold them into, <laughs> into doing that. But um, while it's just the five of us in the room, I want to say an early happy birthday to Amira. Amira, happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Thank you. Happy remembered. Birthday. That's so sweet. You remembered. <laughs> yeah, you. I would have done it whole group, but I don't know everyone's birthday. So I didn't want <laughs> to inadvertently offend someone, but yeah. happy birthday to you, my dear. Oh, thank you. I'm so touched. You remembered that, that, that I'm so touched. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly 24 hours. This is like, I was born at 3.30. So exactly. Oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Because, uh, so, yeah. hey, I want to, um, while Darla, if you're still with us, I know it's your picture now. So, sure am. Okay. <laughs> just hey. the bandwidth. I'm here. What's up? So, we have, I, I want to pick your brain while you're here with us. We want to make sure that we are communicating clearly when the quarterly meetings are and how to access <laughs> it. But, like I mentioned earlier, we have that hurdle of not publishing the Zoom link because we don't want anybody to, to Zoom bomb the meetings. Have you had any like successes or any suggestions of what we might be able to do differently? Because we know it was rocky. We met yesterday and we were like, whoa, it was kind of like you're planning the birthday party, but didn't send out the invitations. So <laughs> it was, it was really odd. I always like, I get all of the emails and okay. I, I've gotten every quarterly invite except for this one. Well, that's because we transitioned from Eric and Jen. And Eric used to do the calendar invites. 
And I didn't realize it was, and Javon, we were like, oh, we didn't know Eric did that. We thought that either um, Les or Ann did it, you know, the marketing and communications. And so it was really just a like, who's carrying the ball? We don't know. <laughs> so, so we talked it through and, and Les was great about getting some stuff the net last night and on social media. But um, we were like, oh, how can we do this better with that piece of, you know, like we wanted to put the link for the Zoom meeting on the last slide for today, but we can't because it gets published on the SIG website. So we're going to put the Zoom link in the chat box um, with the meeting information on the screen. But, you know, the dilemma there is. Yeah. I so is there not a way just to do like the calendar invites and um, keep doing that to the listserv? There is one thing that Eric had mentioned before and what Les ran into when he was sending the calendar in calendar invite out was some people still weren't getting it. So yeah. Weird. And, and I know like we, I mean, we sent a communication out for Digicon, Amira and Cody did, and they used our mailing list, and I didn't get it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> so, I mean, so there's that. You know, <laughs> technology is only as friendly as it wants to be. <laughs> I'm trying to think. You know what? Give me a minute. I'm gonna look back. I save everything. I'm terrible. I, I'm well, an electronic good, pack rat. It's awful. <laughs> Um, I am going to have a look back and I'm just going to see, I'm just wondering if when Eric sent them, if he sent them in a number of different, because the one I got from you was an iCal invite. And I'm wondering if when Eric sent them, if he sent like Outlook invite, iCal yes, invite. I'm just having a look helpful. back. I'm so sorry. Just give me a wee second here. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Do you want me to forward the last one I have? Um, like it was, it was sent in August. The invite is just a super generic. It's not specific to anything. It's not oh. an iCal, it's not an Outlook. I'm gonna forward it to you if that's helpful. Okay, thank you. Is that helpful? I don't know. Yeah, I no, I think it will be helpful in. for us. Don't you, Javon? Like, <laughs> Javon, would you like it too? Shall I just include you both? That would be great. I was still on mute. Yes, please, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so hard, I'm not looking because I'm, yeah, and I only have one screen when I'm at home. <laughs> that would be great. And, um, your iCloud? Yes, in that would be perfect. Thank you. <coughs> I have uh, all of my emails are supposed to go in through my iCloud. And I did have a day and a half where it didn't work. And I know, I know. Lucky my you for only a day and a half. And my email was out of sync on the same day. And Javon had like her email was... How many did you have sitting in there after you? Oh my, it was over 100 sitting in my outbox. And, and then I started sending email to Anne and mid sentence, my emails will cut off. So she would respond to me and she's like, Javon, you're giving me suspense here. I'm only getting. <laughs> you know what? During COVID times and working from home, things can get very boring. <laughs> <laughs> Javon has started a new like <laughs> edge of your seat kind of email approach. <laughs> I love like, it. Guess what's happening in UDLAG? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to wait to find out. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> wait until the next half email. <laughs> Just could you imagine <laughs> just like endless 20 snippets? We should do that. <laughs> and each one like, like an MP3. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. <laughs> like, Gotta abbreviate yeah. my note. I I'm sending a note to the um, breakout <laughs> rooms and <laughs> it was too long, it cut me off. <laughs> 
So I was going to do what Javon did to me. So I can <laughs> do that to the room. To <laughs> be continued. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah. So it was weird. Like, I don't know why. Anyway, I sent that one. I, But it's it's just a really blanket, generic invite. Like, it's not really, okay. and like, it's not specific to anything. And I don't know how he did that. There's well, lots there's of things options. Eric does. I don't know. Right. When you go into the zoom.us, <coughs> there's options for the calendars. Um, you can choose iCal, you can choose Outlook, you can choose Google, and maybe there is like a generic one there. Or maybe he's just clicking all of them so that no matter what, and maybe that's how everyone's getting. Maybe, I didn't like it was at all. I thought, I thought one, I'd have to try it again. <laughs> because I sent notes out to the lead, just for our leadership meetings. Like we had a meeting yesterday and most of them didn't get so I was like yeah and your iCal one like when you had forwarded that one to me mm -hmm. that was no problem like that was which oh, is weird yeah. because we don't use that at all nor are we able to like but yeah. it it exported it into so my fun. Outlook calendar no problem yeah I am... yeah these are the million dollar questions where here's the well, here's the other thing that you could do because you do have the listserv, right? Yes. So if the meeting is made, you can always just copy and paste the meeting information into a generic email and send that. So that, you know, with a little bit of a note around, make sure you pop this into your calendar. Um, and I think the, that's what Les tried to do last night. He was yeah. right on it. And I think he tried to do the calendar invite and then also send like a MailChimp, um, just mail out <coughs> the entire network that had the information in it at least because some people's university systems block, like my university system blocks MailChimp a lot. And depending on what calendar invite it is, it'll block it and it'll end up not going to my um, clutter right away. It'll sit in like this world somewhere first and then go to my clutter. So I'll go back in and look, but there will be like 75 things in the clutter there. So that's why I just started using my Anne Marie 316 because it's everything's supposed to go to that anyways. And so I'll check that first and then I'll go check the university and then I'll go check my Gmail. And <laughs> if it's not there, then I'm just like, someone will, someone will text me and say, where are you? You know. <laughs> and so for us, we didn't get any, like anyone on my end, anyone at, like of my colleagues and Danny, the same, we didn't get Les's email yesterday. No, like okay. we didn't get any of that either. So we got Javon's today. So thank you, or else I wouldn't have been here. And then I got Anne. So that was super great. Um, but yeah, I do think it was helpful though, because it went out on Twitter. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I don't have, like, it was a great reminder for, oh, shoot. Like, I had to save the date from um, the newsletter, but I was like, oh, shoot. I don't actually have the details of that meeting. Yeah. And so that that's was, when I choked to Ian. That was actually like, I, you know, I don't sleep very much. And so I don't remember what time of day I sent the tweet, but it was literally just this like, oh, I'm going to just like, I'm getting ready for our leadership meeting. And so I'm going to just pop a note out to remind everyone that we're meeting for our quarterly meeting for the network. And so that Anne um, jumped on and like forwarded it and sent some too, and then less sent some. And, and then Anne, um, <laughs> Anne emailed me and she was like, so I'm getting a lot of direct messages that people <laughs> did not get the information and they didn't know, you know, <laughs> so we were like, oh, <laughs> We want to come. Yeah. So, I I mean, that's that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. So many folks are interested. <laughs> yes. DMs are blowing up. <laughs> yeah. UDLHE. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. We're sorry. <laughs> you know, and I just like, we, we actually just said to each other, um, 
the higher ed at udl-earn.org. We're like, yeah, we need to find out how to access that email because there's probably a lot of emails in there right now. And neither of us have yeah. access to it yet. We probably received access at some point, but we're just like, don't know where it is. <laughs> It's so much. And you guys are doing such a great job. And I also think it's a, just a really lovely group. So I have yeah. some colleagues where UDL isn't their entire focus, but they definitely have an interest. And so um, I want to say like kind of later last year, they had joined the group and they had attended like a couple, like a couple of meetings. Um, and just before the first one, one in particular was like, like, what's the group like? And kind of like, what's the feel? And it was like, it is, it's a lovely group of folks who want to do a bunch of lovely, great things. So just anyway, after the meeting, she was like, it's a lovely group of folks who's just working towards doing a lot of really lovely, great things. And I was like, they are like, it's just a lovely, um, yep. Everyone's just a really like forgiving, open, like, yeah, yeah. It is a great group to be vulnerable in front of it because is. it really is. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it. I Javon, <laughs> like I appreciate it when people are like, hey, you didn't send me an invite. You know, like how can I come? Can I have the information, please? I'm like, thanks. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no, and and so so like with Danny, I'm so glad he's here today because like as a member of the network before, there's so many faces and so many people on the screen I never realized. And I literally just ran into some things he posted on LinkedIn and messaged him and said, hey, can we use that as an example for our meeting or like in an email? You know, like he wanted to specify that we weren't gonna blast this out on social media because it's his students' work, but he checked with them and he was just so awesome about about providing the information and letting us use his work to grow from so Danny, yeah he was on we were we were trying to <laughs> you'll laugh mid-april of 2020 was going to be our udl unconference um, <laughs> so, uh, myself uh jody black and so it was going to be at mohawk myself jody black and danny we're all like, we were the steering committee for that <laughs> conference. So, so we did, it was all done. It was all planned. It was all sorted. We had registrants. Yeah. 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 And how did that things. go? <laughs> yeah. So that's where I'm trying to think the, the college closed, like everything shut down. I want to say like St. Patrick's day, things were done, done, but it was like the lead up to that. It was like, do we cancel this? Do we wait until the college cancels this? We had people who were like flying in. We're like, before they buy plane tickets, we need to like yeah. pull the plug or not. Like, and I was like, but we're definitely going to. Like, we're definitely going to. <laughs> There's no way this is going to happen. Um, anyway, so see, I was <laughs> I was I'm right there with you because I was. I was checked in for a flight to go out to California to present at a conference. And my travel delegate called me and said, hey, um, did you get your information back for your hotel and for your flight? And I said, why, why would I get it back? Like, I'm, I'm already checked in for my flight and going. And she said, and like, they shut down California. And I'm like, why? You know, I thought maybe there were like forest fires or something. I had no idea. I had no idea. I had no idea. And she's like, um, no, there's this thing. <laughs> it's like, oh. That's that's kind of like me. I was I was actually at um I was at USF. <laughs> I was at USF. And um it was, I want to say it was the top kit conference or it was some some conference over there and they gave out hand sanitizers and everyone was like oh my god hand sanitizers we we can't find hand sanitizers anywhere you guys were so thoughtful and i'm like hand sanitizers what's why 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 are hand sanitizers so important right now i mean i have a hand sanitizer always 
And then um, someone was like, look it up. So I just grabbed my phone and I'm like, Walmart, hand sanitizers, out of stock, office depot, out of stock. And I'm like, wait, what's really happening? <laughs> I had no idea. No idea. Ours, we just had, like, it was a lovely, we had a lovely associate dean who actually in prior to his um, work at the college, worked in healthcare. Um, and so he was around during SARS and we had a handful of cases in Toronto. So as soon as there was any information about it, he was lovely, but he just, um, like he, he, we were all trying to very quickly scramble and, you know, try and, and get some resources up and running and sorted because we knew that the move, like we knew that um, the shift to online was going to happen at this point. They hadn't officially closed the college, but there was a lot of messaging around. If you don't need to be here, don't be here. Um, and he just came in to our, to our area and was just like, IT is coming up, is unlocking everything, take absolutely everything you need and go home. Like, do not come back. I know the college isn't closed yet, but I want all of you to stay safe, take everything and off you go. Um, yeah, and we were like, okay, all right. And this many months later, we are still at home. We are still at home. Yeah. <laughs> <We're still> home. <laughs> Our federal wow. leadership is is pretty great um, as far as getting things like vaccines. And of course, our healthcare system um, is great. I think great. Um, our provincial government right now, you couldn't pick a worse provincial government for there to be a crisis with. It's just a whole pack of dum-dums. Like it's just, I guess I shouldn't say that. This meeting is being recorded, but. <laughs> yeah. This meeting is being recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah, I don't know that you could pick. That's not true. Alberta, we have Alberta. Their leadership's pretty sketchy. Um, so we keep saying Alberta is the Florida of Canada. We're oh, like, thanks. So sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's our closest leadership link. Is like, but oh, honestly, goodness. I feel like Ontario's really trying to make a play for just worse pandemic leadership. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know it's a goal it's an end goal it's just like, we're gonna give it a try <laughs> it's this weird race to nowhere like it's yeah. just oh goodness oh wow and so I attend lovely things like this on a Friday afternoon on a Friday on a Tuesday yeah. afternoon <laughs> I'm like, Friday yet. I want to live on your calendar if it's Friday already oh my gosh <laughs> Okay, I was just like looking to see if there were any notes going on because they're coming back in one minute. It looks like it's probably technology access, faculty development, and examples of evidence. Are those the three that you opened? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it's only like the three groups. So if you do want to go through, like it'll be a very quick run through. Yeah. 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 I think that would be good. Yeah. I, I just so. want, it's just like a fly on the wall. Like it helps us in planning for the next meeting and yep. we have some things already in the works so we want to make sure that we're on track with it and I think it'll be good but let's go ahead and I'm gonna close and we it. totally have time for all three of these yeah. yeah I think we would yeah I'll be quiet now this was lovely <laughs> I'm kind of glad no one no one was interested in administrative leadership Brian, worked out so great for me. We can grab a cup of coffee sometime and go through. <laughs> <laughs> I know we'd be more than willing to do that. This was lovely. <laughs> yeah. All right. I am going to close my breakout room window, Javon, because with this right. split screen stuff that I'm in love with, I have like so many screens open. It's one less. All righty. And I like the people who end up viewing and listening to the recording, they're gonna to get to know us really well. <laughs> okay, close that out. So if there's anything that comes up. Um,
Oh, so Javon kind of helped me with the um, chat box, if you will, because now that I'm going through, I noticed that there were some things that I could have addressed right away for people that might have caused them aches. So I apologize. Okay, we'll go back to our screen. And where are we with the rooms closed now? Yep, looks like okay. rooms are closed. All right, so welcome back everybody. I didn't keep the rooms open to follow who was in there, but I saw that you all like self-reported your attendance on the document. So awesome, love this group. Um, we had three rooms that were pretty active. We had the faculty development, the example of evidence, and the technology access and technology training. So um, by default, since technology access and technology training is um, first and foremost on my screen, did you guys get a chance to have a rep decide what to share from your group. We can't wait to hear all the yeah. yeah. Um, I made it, Sarah. I made a list of kind of our effective practices from our conversations or useful practices that I can share. Okay. Um, and I did put it in the correct box too after I realized I was typing the notes in the wrong place. Oh, <laughs> no worries. It's there. That's not like a wrong. So, so tell us the conversation around it. What worked, what was considered effective within your conversations? Yeah, a common trend across with faculty and staff training and support was giving a little bit of information at a time. So what we called carrots. So sharing like how to, um, you know, do captions, how to add alt text, you know, giving one thing at a time that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, also sharing those built in features that you can access in your learning management system in office. And <coughs> um, we also talked about um, giving templates that are already created that faculty and staff can add to instead of starting from scratch. Um, excuse me, and kind of what these last three really kind of tie up with is that when we're supporting faculty and staff with course design or whatever it is to show why accessibility matters mm -hmm. and how it helps and saves time from the beginning. So you're, you're thinking ahead instead of trying to redo and that you can just use what's already there. Um, one idea that I, I really liked, especially from the faculty side of things is showcasing what is being done um to really um just spotlight um efforts and also what they're doing and how they did it um we also talked about how it's so important for any effort with accessibility or whatever it is to um, coordinate efforts among the administrators and the leaders and the staff and faculty um, and then the last thing that was really just kind of consistent throughout everything everyone said was just to focus on one thing at a time that they don't have to reinvent the wheel, but just to start small and see what big change that makes and continue from there. Awesome. So I love that faculty showcase stood out because that was a huge thing for us, for the leadership team, was um, we want to make sure that we're showcasing you all and all the work that the network is doing. And this transition from last quarterly meeting to this engagement today was um, like our priority and making sure that we dedicated that time to doing that. So I love that that's going to transfer over into your faculties too. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, I think we'll just go to faculty development next. That group, who's the spokesperson for your group? I think I, hi everyone, hi. hi, and I think I checked on to the um, faculty develop, did you go through, did you just call on faculty administrator ownership? Um, faculty development. Oh, I'm sorry, that's where, yeah, I'm sorry. 
so we didn't really pick a person. I don't know. Oh. So do you want to, do you want to go or, or, or do you think Celine's shaking her head? No. Um, okay. So I'm going <laughs> to, uh, unless there's anyone, someone else in, in the group, we're too busy having a really great conversation in fact. Okay. Um, so, so you'll notice at the bottom of that, um, at the bottom of the, of that list, if you scroll a little bit further down there, Anne, yeah. um, there were a lot of really great resources that were shared in terms of the kinds of like sort of micro credentials and badging and those kinds of things that folk have started. And we started, uh, we discussed, um, you know, buy-in in terms of that and how some of those are working. Um, but we also had a larger conversation about how this is all very contextual and how this is very dependent on like, how many UDL people do you have in your, in your institution and how many, like for how many students, for example. Right. And so um, that was, it was a very, it was a very fruitful uh, conversation because we were talking about like, what are the things that we need to do? Like, what are the things that allow for those buy-ins and is it, you know, you know, paying, is it badging? Is it coffee and donuts? Like what is, what are the things, all of which work um, in particular institutions in different ways, but it depends on the, the, the demographic of the place that you're at. So happy that you all brought that up because, as you know, Anne, that goes with um, what we're doing for organizing our next meeting, um, which I won't share right now because we have one more group, um, which was the example of evidence. And this was the group that um, was going to go in with not one of the pain point focus areas necessarily but relating that to um, an example that Danny gave us and he joined that group. So I can't wait to hear what you all talked about. Okay, well, I was uh, put in charge of kind of letting everybody know what we came up with. Um, it was really nice having Danny there to explain more than just what we got to read. So I felt like we were cheating a little bit, um, <laughs> but it was a, I, I love what he's doing. And we, we talked about, well, obviously the whole program, how, how do we change our, our organizations, et cetera. One of the things we do come to a realization is, is that it's obviously gonna take time. Um, this is not something we can just flip a switch on as uh, Danny mentioned, um, that the instructors, when it, you're on, in an online situation, really need to have, be visible. And that was what was wonderful about his particular model is that um, he was, as he mentioned, in the learning process while the students are learning, not just after they've already submitted work. And we talked a lot about that's kind of what they're used to, taking a test. Just give me the information. I'll give it back to you. Um, and some of, the, some of the ways in which we need to get around that and change the student's mindset, not just the faculty's mindset on that. Um, and that having a part of the learning. I thought that was, oh, I wanna do this right now. Okay, um, so adoption of technology. We, we talked about this for quite a while in this, you know, the pandemic kind of forced people, whether they wanted to or not, to get online. And what that did, um, uh, Marla was saying that they actually had a whole bunch of professors just retire because they just didn't wanna deal with it. Um, and we can certainly understand that. Um, but it's not just exhausting for the faculty, but as the schools came up with ways of continuing their the education for students, it exhausted the students as well, because you might have one faculty member using these three types of technology, but their, their other course faculty members using three different pieces of technology. And now the students are overwhelmed, never mind the faculty being overwhelmed. Um, and just trying to come to some kind of agreement out of school <laughs> on how this is all gonna happen is going to, as we said, progress slowly. Um, what else? Oh yeah, how to encourage specific tools. That's where we were going with that. And then incorporating the, we had uh, Amanda was actually on um, in with us and she does uh, teacher prep classes. And she was talking about these simulations and scenarios she does with her students. And we're like, well, why couldn't we use that in faculty development? like use those same kinds of things to get them motivated to kind of move in the right direction. So those were some of the thoughts that our group had. If anyone else from that group wants to add anything, feel free to jump in. 
I think you were so thorough, Alexis. I have like a lot of notes from you. I wrote down and then tagged next to it a couple of times that in the learning, like being present in the learning as faculty, you know, as the instructor, as the student, and really shifting both of those mindsets, not one or the other, right? That's a huge takeaway. Um, wow, such amazing work. This is why we wanted to start with your voices, um, because we have a lot to share with you all now. But um, if you haven't, give yourself a pat on the back. We intentionally wrote into the steps, making sure that you thank each other, because without each other, um, you know, it's so much harder to go at this work alone. And I feel energized by all the great things that were shared. Um, so I look forward to continuing this work. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our screen and move us forward, Javon. You're on mute. Okay, sorry about that. So first and foremost, we've had um, a lot of volunteers so far that we just like to thank. And um, you see all the names listed here. Um, again, thank you. Thank you so much for all of your help in um, reviewing um, proposals for, for the summit. There's just so many things that we would like to thank each and every one of you for. And also um, as we move forward, we'd like to share some opportunities of how you can contribute as members of the network. So. so in the next few slides, we'll have a few people chat about some ways that you can participate and have some opportunities for collaboration. We're going to go through some Digicon, Thank You DL, some internationalization, and some research opportunities. So let's move forward and find out a little bit more. We'll start with Digicon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that Katya can. Thank you. See, yes, I can share. Um, you can see my screen? Yes. Yes, perfect. Um, thank you. So for those who uh, we have not met yet, uh, we are Amira and Katja. We are the new Digicon co-chairs. We have taken over from Eric, so it's really scary that Eric is here right now. <laughs> Um, but uh, um, yeah, so about the Digicon, uh, I think you had received a call for volunteers in the last week and we sent it out by MailChimp. Um, about the new Digicon for 2022, we were thinking of uh, doing things like make participants uh, create things together and troubleshoot and discuss and collaborate. Um, we were thinking of hands-on and projects, make participants, for example, create projects together, have roundtables, workshops, so have as little uh, presentations as possible. So we decided to have the theme of the Digicon 2022, oh, also social spaces and networking, um, as a UDL maker space. So we want to have it as a creative space space where people can work together and do some hands-on and where we like get away from this COVID situation and just really get working in our network. Um, a maker space, I found the definition, it's a collaborative workspace for making, learning, exploring and sharing and we can use high tech and no tech. Well, it's a digital, it's a digital conference, we have to use some tech. Um, but apart from that, we are hoping that we can have active sessions where participants can meet, they can discuss, they can troubleshoot, create, learn, so that it's going to be as uh, active as possible. Share experiences, best practice, new knowledge, hands-on troubleshooting. Um, yes, 
we are thinking of using uh, Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks is a platform uh, that can also help us to strengthen our professional network and the collaboration between members, also institutions and countries. Um, we have uh, started to create our account. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be a UDLHD Mighty Networks. I don't know if anybody's used it before. We are not publishing it to the network members themselves uh, yet, uh, but I was thinking that we could use it for uh, the Digicon planning. So whoever is <clears throat> going to be in our volunteer teams is going to get invited into Mighty Networks um, because that's an awesome uh, platform and we're hoping to use it for the Digicon. So Amira, do you want to talk about the next slide? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks, uh, Katja. And thanks for um, this time to speak a little on the Digicon. So um, I'll just mention the call for volunteers. So we have already, so the call for volunteers was sent out a while back. Um, and we've got some really good, um, you know, kind people that have volunteered to serve on the uh, various committees. So we have a call for proposals committee, conference infrastructure committee, sponsorship committee, marketing and social media, accessibility, techno technological support, and conference conference moderation, all these are committees. Um, we are looking for more volunteers, um, always, as always, it's always nice to have help. But in particular, we'd love um, a little more support with sponsorship. We have a couple of um, folks who have kindly offered to support with that, but we'd love um, some more support there. So I'll pop in the chat the, um, the link to the sign up form and our email if anyone would like to get in touch, um, or you can just visit the form to sign up more directly or just to learn more about what is involved with each of the committees. Um, and another, we'll have another uh, like push coming up as well. So um, there will be another one uh, somewhere around the 17th for a reminder and just another call for more volunteers. And then we'll have a deadline of approximately November 21st to kind of cut off the, um, sign up and registering as volunteers. So please get in there soon if you're interested. And if you have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then we'll, we're planning to have our first meeting with all volunteers um, just to kind of kick things off in December and just get to know one another and then start some more in-depth uh, detailed planning in the new year. Um, and then hooray, <laughs> our Digicon uh, 2022. We're expecting it to be held in October. Um, the exact date will be announced soon. So we'll have a save the date for you all soon. But yes, October um, is going to come up really quickly. So yeah, we'll get to planning and we're very excited um, for, for the next uh, Digicon. So thank you for giving us a little spotlight time here. <laughs> no problem. If you can, um, thank you. I'm going to go back to our slides. And I'm excited for Digicon this year. It's all, it was a blast last year. Um, Javon. Yes, and now we are up to Think UDL. Now, this is super exciting. Think UDL, it's a podcast all about universal design for learning, um, where we hear from people who are designing and implementing strategies in post-secondary settings with um, learner variability in mind. Now, the really good thing about Think UDL is a couple things, right? It's hosted by one of our network members, Lillian, and I think she's on, I'm not sure. I'm pretty she sure was. I saw yeah. her name here. Um, and a few good things about it is that it's almost identically aligned with UDLHE. So it's a great opportunity for, for collaboration. Um, a little bit about the podcast is that um, she produces about 25 episodes per year um, and it reaches all over the place, right? So there's approximately 2000 downloads per month. Um, international, it reaches the US, Canada, Ireland, Australia, just to name a few. Um, as of August, uh, United States was obviously the biggest listener with about 15,000 downloads in the last 15 months. So followed by Canada with 2.4. So that's really, really a huge reach. And, um, and you'll be hearing a lot more about Think UDL in the podcast and some words from Lillian soon to come. So something to look forward to. 
That's a great shout out. I, w- I want you to do a shout out for me sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited about the upcoming collaborations that we're going to have. I think it's a great it's, connection to our network. So is an awesome host. So let's go ahead to Natsuko now. Yes. Hi, everyone. So uh, please hop in and, you know, we bounce back. Yes. But um, so UDLH research opportunities, and we are looking for people to join the force on the research activities. So there are three elements. And in, uh, we are going to look into the impact on within us and immediate others and uh, outside the community. So these are the three pillars that we are going to look at. And it was uh, uh, based on our conversations with Anne. And uh, within us, so you can see the uh, first icon that's focusing on within ourselves. So it focuses on personalization of practice to continuously grow ourselves. So we'd like to have everyone you on board to connect our ways to work based on the survey items. I think Anne can share more to um, about the survey items mm-hmm. that developed by Anne and work on our problem solving. So we are gonna be having problem solving steps during our meetings. What is the goal, goal identification? What are the steps to achieve the goal? So within ourselves individually, but we come together to say, share some experiences and share out some challenges and problems solved together. So instead of working in isolations as individuals, bring us all together to connect to common goals and share experiences and problem solve for challenges and evaluate and discuss solutions and move forward to the next steps toward the goal. And uh, so what's the end result? So the end result, the product of this will be infographic highlighting the problem solving steps and work. And it's gonna be the, okay, the, we are gonna have the meeting problem solving session and then create the infographic highlighting these steps in our work, each step of the way. And do you have something to add to that one? That was awesome. Um, I just really want to make sure that everybody's aware that there's like loads of room and opportunity for um, network people to step in and work within these different research clusters. And we'll be coordinating that meeting to do so. And what's essential to us is that we're keeping an eye on the research that's in the field We also wanna make sure that we're doing our own research as a network, as higher ed professionals, and then also um, making sure that we're personalizing our practice like Mitsuko just said. And I'll share a little bit more about that um, after we go into the next area, which is internationalization. We're going to come um, bring this all together at the end and share the links that you can do to um, complete a survey to let us know your interests so that we can reach out to you for um, different things like the network and, um, or the network research, I'm sorry, and internationalization. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move us into internationalization, Natsuko, if that's okay. Yeah, and, and if you're interested in immediate others, like seeking and collect the use of what's there on UDL and create a kind of like, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be fast. Um, a, ultimately stellar UDL 8101 hub for higher ed and outside the community is based on the research uh, through the quarterly meetings, digital lab and virtual coffee pop up and so forth, the, how we communicate our research to our network and within our community and outside the community. So that's what these three icons are for. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Nicely said. Okay, so oops. I skipped one. So internationalization. Um, It's funny, we were having a conversation yesterday in the leadership meeting and Anne said, well, how are you defining that? Because I'm in Canada, do you consider me to be an international? And what this is really is we want to work on having a, um, 
global understanding of what our members need. So how can we be more inclusive with our planning for the network um, to be international in the practices and um, our procedures? So for example, the times that we have meetings or the, the way that we coordinate the meetings um, is, is a great example. But the definition, um, and that I ended up <laughs> landing on, is really like looking at that view of the world in which we see ourselves connected to a global community. And we can assume that sense of responsibility as members. So in doing so, um, what we're going to do is coordinate some interviews and focus groups amongst our members. So if you are a member from the Americas, it doesn't mean you can't participate in this. Of course, we want to hear everyone's voice. It's about being inclusive in practice, not exclusive. But we're going to cluster our groups in um, different regions or mixed regions and really get some insights as to how can we be creative and um, in including everyone and making sure that it's not just a passive, um, well, watch the recording if you can't stay up till two o'clock in the morning to join us kind of thing. Um, not that that's been the practice before, but our network is growing and we wanna make sure that we're growing with it. So there will be opportunities for internationalization. Um, so the next thing takes us to the what's next. And um, before I pass this over to Javon to close us out, I just wanted to let you know that the research that Natsuko spoke about, the internationalization, um, a couple of questions about the coordination of our meetings is available on this first link called the Survey for Network Opportunities. The second link is on campus with us. That was a part of our gamification that I mentioned at the start of the meeting. And that gives you access to a Google form to um, share a little bit of information about you. And with your permission, we'll highlight some of the quotes and different things um, throughout our meetings and get to know each other at another level as a network. And then there's this pre-Q3 meeting tween work. And that essentially is, we didn't know what to call it because it's a new way of work for us, but um, it is a survey of 16 questions and it is guided by our initial question that we had about how is our UDL practice principles to practice going in higher ed. And those 16 questions represent um, two questions each for the eight steps of organizational problem solving. So um, your information will be sent to you and there's directions in that survey. Um, it should be relatively quick. And the whole point of it is for us to be able to design our quarterly meetings based off of the needs of the network. So we will be sending um, all of the, this information out that you learned about these work groups in an email. Um, hopefully everyone will get it. Um, <laughs> so you know an email is coming. Um, we will send all the information out, but you can always reach out to Javon and I, or Anne or Mark or Les or Katya or Mira, um, Natsuko, if you have questions. Our goal is to have leaders come in from the network because we have many leaders within the network and we want to highlight your expertise and um, your contributions. So doing this pre quarter three meeting tween work survey will help us not only in designing the quarterly meetings, but in growing our, in our UDL HE practices. And then Javon, I'm gonna let you go ahead and close this out for me five you. minutes. <laughs> and, and just as a reminder, um, the surveys, they aren't very time consuming, like the survey for network opportunities really only asks you four simple questions. And the on campus with us, that's your opportunity to shine so we can really get to know each and every one of you. And if you want to add a photo of yourself there as well, that would be fabulous too, just so we can put some faces to names that we that we typically see. Um, one quick thing that 
we completely forgot to mention is that we have pop-up opportunities. So if you feel that you have a great idea, something that works well in collaboration with um, UDLHE, please let us know. We would love to, to help you host a, a pop-up event. And that's something that I think would work out really well and have a lot of interest from the network. Um, only have four minutes left. So I really want to thank each and every one of you for joining us for this quarterly meeting um, and save the date for the next one. It's going to be Thursday, the 24th of February. I'm going to put the Zoom link in the chat just so you can save the date just in case. Um, like Anne said, I know there's been a couple of mishaps with us. Um, sending out these communications or some people not receiving them. So please add this to your calendar Thursday, the 24th of February. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys. And once more, please feel free to reach out to myself, to Anne, to, to Amira, Katia about DigiCon, um, Natsuko about research. We're all here to help and um, we look forward to collaborating. Yeah, so we can take these last couple of minutes to try out some of those links. You can always hang with us for a little bit. And we thank you all for being such an incredible community. And I just put that link for the next meeting in the chat box. So thanks, everybody. <laughs> Last, I just saw that. <laughs>